The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, Breakout Investing, with your host, Ken Shreve. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Breakout Investing on TFNN. Ken Shreve with you, like I am every day on TFNN from 3 to 4 Eastern. Uh, the number to use, same number, 877-927-6648. You can call me, let me know what's uh, happening in this market, what stocks uh, have your interest at the moment. Don't forget, you can get my show as a podcast on iTunes if you can't listen live, so head over to uh, iTunes and uh, check out the podcast. Uh, you can also listen to all TFNN programming on your smartphone. Uh, just open your smartphone browser, type in tfnn.mobi, tfnn.mobi in your smartphone browser, and you can listen to the stream that way as well. And if you want to look at charts uh, right along with me as I go over them on the show, you can do that um, watching Tiger TV on the homepage of tfnn.com. Channel 1, the show is carried live, archived in channel 13 and uh, tiger tv is also viewable now on your handheld device good stuff all right taking a look at the uh well i have the nasdaq 100 index up here uh, right now it is up um Close to eight points today, three tenths of a percent to 2735. 2735 for the NASDAQ 100. Let's um, take a look at the NASDAQ composite here. We'll see. It's, uh, it's hanging in there pretty good. Just kind of tight, sideways, quiet trading in the major averages for several days now. I was on uh, Tom's show yesterday and you know talked about the fact that you know the fact that the market is not giving up any gains here I mean that is a sign of strength uh, in and of itself now obviously not much uh, conviction uh, behind the buying but the market is biding time here uh, content to just uh, move sideways uh, question is if we're gonna get some uh, get a little juice behind some of these uh, gains in coming days it's certainly not out of the question and uh, I'm gonna you know maintain that the bull uh, case still uh, holds more water than the bear case uh, at, uh, at at this point. Seeing some pretty good action underneath uh, the surface. Uh, breadth could always be better. Um, you know, institutional quality growth names look like they're they're trying to get going here, but the bottom line is they're really just going to need some some buying conviction to really get going and. Volume still very light in the market. Um, on the NASDAQ yesterday, uh, volume was average. The average daily volume on the NASDAQ is just going lower and lower these days. Um, right now, about 1.5 billion shares. That's what, it, that's what you typically see on the NASDAQ. Um, we're tracking pretty close to that level uh, today. Volume on the New York Stock Exchange has really dried up uh, in recent days. Yesterday, very light at 561 million shares. Uh, we're even tracking lighter than that uh, today. So... Tech stocks uh, outperforming here a little bit uh, today. The NASDAQ composite up 13.5 points to 3,030. Let's check in on the S&P 500. We'll see that it, uh, at last check, was trading up near its session high, up close to three points, two-tenths of a percent to 14.06. And finally, the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average here, uh, up seven and a half points, not much, to 13,179. So we're just kind of in a holding pattern here. Um, you know, which way is this market going to go? That's that's the uh, that's the big question. I've been selectively, you know, nibbling at some long positions for the Ultimate Growth Stocks model portfolio. If you'd like to check out a 30-day uh, free trial to Ultimate Growth Stocks. You can do that right on the homepage of TFNN.com. Um, you, you see me right in the carousel there, Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. You can also click on the Newsletters tab right on the homepage. Uh, once you click that, click on Investment Newsletters, and you can get all the information you need uh, right there. But it's a 30-day free trial. You get an, an, an extensive weekly update every Tuesday, and then in between, email uh, buy alerts, email sell alerts, uh, email uh, market updates if I have something to... Um, you know, something I need to say about the market, I will uh, stay in communication with subscribers uh, that way as well. So, been selectively uh, nibbling here. You know, you often hear good uh, good traders, good investors say that you know to to you should only be investing when you have uh, an edge, when you have an edge in the market. And right now, with volume as light 
as it is, it's it's uh, it's difficult. I don't really feel like I've got uh, an edge in this uh, market. Seeing some stocks under accumulation, but uh, seeing plenty of others that uh, that aren't. So. Really, the goal to maximizing profits in uh, during a uh, market uptrend is riding the coattails of uh, big investors when they're putting money to work. And you know, to that point, they're really not putting money to work yet. Still, a lot of money on the sidelines. Uh, scant volume uh, on the exchanges is uh, just the way it is. We're in a low volume period uh, for the market, but I suspect when Wall Street comes back from uh, vacation, um, you know. Uh, first few weeks of September, you know, we should start to see, should start to see uh, volume pick up a little bit. And I think market direction will be, uh, you know, a little easy, a little easier to discern. Don't forget, we've got the Fed meeting coming up September 12th, uh, 13th. There's still chatter out there that we could see some coordinated uh, move again from the uh, central banks uh, around the world, ECB, maybe China, maybe the U.S. Uh, market is certainly uh, expecting something from the, the Fed here. We had some manufacturing data earlier today. This is really kind of a problem area for the Fed because I think it's tomorrow we've got the latest reading from the Philadelphia Fed. Yeah, that comes on uh, Thursday. Uh, the Philadelphia Fed business outlook for August, uh, that has contracted for three months in a row, and it's expected to contract again. So we're looking at four straight months of contraction for the Philly Fed. Earlier today, we had the Empire Manufacturing uh, index uh, that pointed to uh, weak manufacturing activity in the New York region. It came in at minus 5.9. That was well below estimates of uh, positive 5.0 and much lower than July's reading of 7.4. So manufacturing activity not uh, not great. The Fed is um, you know certainly keeping an eye on that, and of course it's very cognizant of stubbornly high unemployment and sluggish job growth for. Uh, several months in a row. Taking a look at crude oil today, up 1% to 94.33. Department of Energy's weekly report showed a larger than expected drop in crude supplies, so crude oil uh, finishes at 94.33. Let's uh, check in on the USO here. Uh, we'll see that it is, uh, it's in an uptrend here, still trading below its 200-day uh, moving average, so still has some overhead supply to uh, work through here, but uh, technically definitely on the mend here is the uh, USO, so uh, this, uh, this could mean we, we could see the USO start to make a run towards uh, 37, um, but we'll see what oil prices decide to do in the future here. Gold for December delivery up four dollars and twenty cents, three tenths of a percent to one thousand six hundred and six dollars and sixty cents an ounce. Checking in on uh, GLD, it is uh, trading uh, up fifty three cents, three tenths of a percent to one fifty five sixty six. Just holding above its 50-day moving average here uh, could be a support level for now. Uh, I think it's uh, likely we'll see that GLD trade in a little range here between 155 and 160 uh, in the uh, near term. U.S. dollar index uh, up a little bit, uh, up 19 ticks to 82.67. Uh, Not a big gain for the greenback, uh, only up about two tenths of a percent. Uh, checking in on bond yields here, the yield on the 10-year note uh, up big again today. This is. Um, 1.8% uh, for the 10-year note, the 30-year bond at 2.9%. Uh, and take a look at uh, the chart of, uh, of these bond yields here. And here's a look at the 10-year. Uh, you can see it's up. Um, what is that? Uh, six out of the past seven trading sessions. So uh, investors continue to sell bonds, and a similar uh, story with the uh, the 30-year uh, yield as well. It has uh, come up hard off its uh, bottom here. Looks like it approaching some uh, resistance here at uh, about a two point you know nine seven yield uh, thereabouts. But um, you know coming up to its two hundred day moving average here. So. Uh, Pressure in the bond market uh, certainly is funneling a little bit of money into uh, stocks. Let's take a look at the TLT. Uh, it is uh, having another tough day today. 
you can see this uh, uh, this ETF is down in six out of the past uh, seven trading sessions, uh, starting to get close to its 200-day moving average here at 119.06. So bonds remain under uh, under pressure here, and. Um, you know the U.S. dollar. I think with the with the weakness in the bonds and uh, a, a, a greenback index, the U.S. dollar index that is still trading underneath its 50-day uh, moving average here. This um, you know should be good news for stock market uh, bulls. Uh, just because the dollar index is below the 50-day doesn't mean it's going to stay below there. But you can see it's been. Uh, it's been below the 50-day moving average for several days now, trying to rally back above it, and we could see the 50-day the starting to turn into a resistance level here. Taking a look at shares of uh, Apple uh, today, under pressure, uh, down sharply for a little while, but um, trading right in the middle half of its uh, range today. Uh, its four-session winning streak in jeopardy here, shares of Apple, uh, only down 81 cents now to 630.88. Uh, the story here, Samsung uh, unveiled a new tablet uh, computer today, the Galaxy Note 10.1. Uh, Samsung is going to start uh, selling the 10-inch tablet in the U.S. on Thursday at a uh, starting price of $499. The device will come with a stylus and also offer a split screen where some apps will be able to be viewed side by side. So a couple neat features there. Um, remember that uh, research firm ID recently reported that Samsung's total smartphone sales in the second quarter totaled 46 million units. And how many did Apple sell in the second quarter? 26 million. So Samsung uh, still very dominant in the smartphone market, and uh, they're not doing bad uh, tablet-wise uh, either, although uh, Apple does have the edge, uh, I believe, market share-wise in, in, in the, the tablet space. M&A news today, uh, Carlyle Group, uh, CG. Let's check in on uh, CG. This is a U.K.-based um, company, I believe, but uh, Carlyle Group uh, up two cents today to $24.95. It uh, bought Getty Images from uh, private equity firm Hellman and Friedman for $3.3 billion. Hellman and Friedman bought Getty Images in 2008, took it private, at the time, the deal was uh, valued at just over $2 billion. Uh, so that was a profitable transaction for Hellman and Friedman. Uh, Carlyle Group buys Getty Images for $3.3 billion. Uh, Carlyle has been in acquisition mode lately. Earlier this month, they acquired asset manager TCW, which is majority owned by France's Societe Generale. Uh, TCW has assets under management of about $127 billion. So uh, Carlyle, Group, Carlyle Group with a couple of acquisitions uh, recently. Let's uh, check in on shares of Starbucks here. Starbucks uh, at one point was trading higher today. And, uh, yeah, it's outperforming nicely, up $1.81, 3.9% to 48.24. Uh, news here is that the stock was added to uh, Credit Suisse's focus list. Credit Suisse removed. Uh, McDonald's. Uh, interesting move for Starbucks here. It looks more like a dead cat bounce. Good volume in the stock today. Still stuck underneath some pretty key resistance levels here at, you know, 50, 51 bucks uh, a share. Uh, 26 times trailing earnings, 22 times forward earnings. Valuation-wise, still pretty cheap. They're going to be growing earnings at a 20% clip, but uh, still wouldn't touch Starbucks here. We'll be right back, folks. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kay Stalter, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. 
bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of the Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Breakout Investing on TFNN, 877-927-6648. Let's go to uh, Joe in Boston, wants to talk about a hard disk drive maker. How are you doing today, Joe? Good, Ken. How are you? Oh, not bad, not bad. Just uh, enjoying this beautiful weather in Boston today. Oh yeah, good. Uh, yeah. Not not not, uh, not not too humid and just just no. right, huh? Just like San Diego. Ah, that sounds good. <laughs> so uh, hey, I had a couple questions here. This STX, I know it's a bit extended, but it, you know it's 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 uh, it never really gave you a proper buy point. But I wanted your opinion on this. Has about almost a four percent yield versus WDC, and if you think either one is a better than the other or a better setup. Well, I mean, so these are like the the, the, the two big players in the yeah, hard disk drive, right. uh, pay, uh, Seagate and uh, Western Digital. Uh, in terms of both stocks, I really I don't know enough about the disk drive business to say that one is better than the other. They both look right. really solid here. They're both uh, stocks that are under you know some uh, accumulation uh, valuation wise. Of course, they're they're very they're very cheap. Um, but the disk drive makers never really. It's such a cyclical business. They never really carry a high multiple. So they both look good. What I would say is that I probably would give the edge to Western Digital here, really? only because uh, only because it's showing a little more signs of accumulation uh, to me than uh, than Seagate Technology. What I would like to see each of these stocks do, because with um, with Seagate, you're looking at uh, several you know weekly price gains in a row. Uh, same thing with Western Digital. They've just they've just shot up off the bottom. I think you could get. 
an, an entry point here if they can form some sort of handle area for at least a week, maybe two to, to three weeks. And if we do get a little pullback here in the market, that's when you could see these handle area forms in, in both Seagate and, and Western Digital. Right. Out of the two, I'm probably hearing a little more buzz around about uh, Western Digital than Seagate, but they're both kind of six of one, half dozen of the other, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's my general take there. They're, they're both under accumulation. Uh, I wouldn't chase them. I think you'd agree with me. You don't want to chase them. Uh, right. up, yep. up here, but you, you could get uh, you could get a little market pullback and, and get little handle area forms in uh, both of these charts. I, uh, I guess you know the tight trading here. I don't know how much more we can go sideways like this. Uh, that's a good point. You know, we're just kind of biding biding time here. It's it's probably going to break one way uh, one way or the other. I agree. And I guess and I think with the volumes, gonna, if you can take out fourteen fifteen and fourteen twenty two, and then even do it in one day, it's going to. There's going to be a lot of shorts that are going to be covering, and there's going to be a lot of guys that got to put money to work. Uh, I would agree with that, and I also think that even if we do see some uh, some selling pressure start to build in this market again, when you have the Dow and the S and P 500 uh, kind of intent on approaching their their spring highs, it's not uncommon, you know, to see a little bit of a shakeout. It might only be two or or two or three percent, but it, it right. could be one or one or two, you know, kind of harrowing days. But that might it might be just a quick shakeout that's going to eventually you know pave the way for more money to come in. So right. just, uh, I'm enough to do that yeah 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 yep i got it all right thanks joe appreciate all right, it thanks ken take care all right yep yeah, bye-bye all right, Joe from uh, Boston. Yeah, hard disk drive makers, uh, you know, I mean, with uh, with, with Seagate, in fact, uh, let me see if I have weekly charts here for either Western Digital. Uh, yeah, here's Western Digital. And, you know, I mean, this is what a move straight up off the bottom looks like. You've got, um, you know, seven straight weekly price gains, another weekly price gain taking shape today. What would be perfectly normal, healthy, acceptable uh, for both stocks would be just to kind of see a little bit of profit taking after such a huge move move, you form a little handle area. In fact, I mentioned Western Digital on the show uh, yesterday. Um, but, uh, you know, both both charts are, are very similar, Western Digital and uh, Seagate. Here's a look at uh, Seagate, another, you know, just move up off the bottom here. So let's see if they can form handle areas. I wouldn't chase uh, either of them. Um, up uh, up here, but, um, you know, you could you could see an entry point um, sooner. You know, if if it uh, if it forms uh, the handle area. Taking a look at uh, NetEase today, this is a stock that uh, is seeing some uh, some volume today ahead of earnings uh, after the close, uh, trying to retake its 50-day moving average here. Really, not a whole lot in China is looking uh, looking good. I think it's still too early to buy NetEase, but wouldn't be surprised to see some good numbers from uh, from this company. They're based in uh, China. They uh, have a China-based uh, web portal. They basically operate an online gaming community. If it's one thing that China is not suffering from is lack of internet uh, participation among its uh, residents, booming internet growth in, in China. So some of these uh, web portals uh, continue to see strong business. NetEase is expected to earn a dollar eight a share up 19% from a year ago. Uh, good top line growth expected uh, up 25% to 339 million. So NetEase is uh, coming up off its bottom here, starting to show renewed signs of accumulation. Um, just a base building stock, though. Still too early to buy, in my opinion. I mean, a real aggressive buy before earnings. But wouldn't be surprised to see good numbers from NetEase uh, after the close today. All right, folks, headed into break number two. We'll be back in about four minutes. You're listening to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Ken Shreve with you. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. 
If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intra-week trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, has just launched, and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers, where she focuses on small-cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These new Newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by Direction Shares. To learn more about technical tools for the sophisticated active investor, hit the Direction Shares banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks, to Breakout Investing. Quick check on the markets here. The Dow down at five points, 13,166. Tech stocks outperforming today. NASDAQ up 12.5 points. Call it four tenths of a percent to 3,029. And the S&P 500 up close to two points, not quite 1,405 for the S&P 500. Um, we had Mike on the line a little while ago. I uh, lost the call, but he wanted to talk uh, riverbed technology. Remember, after the close today, Cisco Systems uh, networking giant is uh, going to be reporting earnings. Uh, so what it says could uh, could affect shares of uh, riverbed. But uh, riverbed, much a much smaller company than uh, than Cisco. Very liquid stock. Um, average daily volume of about 4.2 million shares. Market cap of just over 3 billion for a stock that is about 35 percent off its 52-week high. Riverbed bed really has been taken apart um a little over a year ago this was a you know 40 45 dollar stock and um, you know right now it's about 20 so it's um it's been hit very hard, but it has come up off its uh, bottom here, and uh, not uh, the uh, a type of, of stock that I would typically target for my ultimate growth stocks model portfolio. I tend to look at stocks showing relative price strength in the market, but again, for a stock far off its high, Riverbed is showing improving technical action, no question about it. You can see a, a gap up here. I assume this was uh, earnings related, sort of a, a low volume pullback. Uh, more volume comes in. It's been moving sideways, so kind of 
stair stepping uh, higher here. I suspect the $23 level is probably going to be a resistance, but the fact that it's holding comfortably above its 50-day moving average here, I uh, wouldn't be surprised at all to see uh, riverbed continue higher from here. Probably could get another uh, two, maybe three points out of this for uh, for a trade. So riverbed uh, definitely has suffered technical damage in recent months, but uh, starting to show renewed signs of accumulation here. Um, maybe people just uh, taking advantage of a stock uh, on sale. But technically, you know, for again a stock that's been hit pretty hard uh, is definitely showing renewed signs of uh, strength. Uh, the gun makers today, remember they've been big leaders in the market, uh, Smith and Wesson uh, getting hit hard today. Look at this stopping just short of its 50-day moving average here. This 50-day moving average short-term support level, you know, really kind of playing out here with Smith & Wesson. Uh, the stock hit an intraday low of $8.42. Its 50-day moving average is $8.52, uh, currently trading at $8.61, down about 12% on the uh, day after KeyBank Capital Markets um, downgraded not only Smith & Wesson, but also Sturm Ruger. These have been uh, big uh, price performers in the market, good fundamentals at, uh, at both companies, um, but uh, Key bank uh, capital markets, uh, not uh, sure these companies are going to be able to maintain their uh, price momentum in coming months. So Smith & Wesson getting hit hard, and Sturm Ruger, which is uh, RGR, it is also uh, down not as much as Smith & Wesson, but Sturm Ruger down 6.4% to $45.02. So... Key Bank Capital Markets downgrades both uh, gun makers uh, today. Some economic data. Um, pretty busy week. Uh, earlier today, we had the National Association of Home Builders Wells Fargo Builder Sentiment Index came out earlier today. It rose two points uh, in August to 37 up from 35 in July. That's the highest reading since March 2007. Uh, the index has been moving higher since uh, since January. I think the home builders generally still look uh, pretty good here. I don't know that they're, um, you know, they're just in good technical setups here. They're showing good uh, price support, good relative uh, price strength. Uh, wouldn't be surprised at all if we can get new inflows into this market, which is certainly a question mark uh, at this point, but I think the, the, the chances are uh, reasonably good that it could happen. Wouldn't be surprised to see the ITB eventually take out its recent high of 1750. Uh, you, you can buy individual home building stocks. Um, you know, there's several names in the group. Uh, Lennar is uh, is interesting. We'll take a look at shares of uh, Lennar today. Basically flat at 3128, but a nice uh, technical setup here. You could probably call this a base on base pattern. You see a base that for, started forming here in May, uh, broke out, rallied less than 20%, formed another base, came down to its 50-day moving average here, and is now sitting near its high. So these stocks are, you know, continuing to show relative price strength. Uh, but rather than pick the individual home builders in the group, I, if I if I do, uh, you know, get back into the iShares Dow Jones U.S. Home Construction Index Fund again, ITB, that would be the the way I would uh, do it. Just own kind of a basket of home builders instead of trying to pick um, the individual uh, names in the uh, space. Standard Pacific is another home builder that continues to show relative uh, price strength. Good technical setup here. Uh, low price stock, you know, priced at uh, $6.18 right now, but excellent um, uh, excellent chart here as well. Uh, swing point around $6.40 uh, thereabouts. So uh, home building, home builders, uh, sentiment continues to be pretty good around that industry group uh, in general. Yesterday we got uh, wholesale inflation. The producer price index actually came in a little hotter than expected. It didn't uh, bother the market uh, too much. Uh, today, U.S. consumer prices were unchanged in July. Uh, economists were expecting prices to increase two-tenths of a percent, so that was uh, a tame reading on consumer inflation. The core rate was up only one-tenth of one percent. Um, estimate there was for a gain of two-tenths of a percent. Year-over-year year, consumer prices are up 1.4 percent. Not too bad there. Core prices up 2.1 percent. That's uh, not uh, not sounding an alarm at the Fed either. So um, uh, pretty good reading from the CPI earlier today. And then I mentioned the Empire Manufacturing uh, Index that showed uh, weak manufacturing activity in the New York region. That comes ahead of the Philly Fed Index uh, tomorrow. That's a closely watched uh, index. And again, three straight months of con uh, contraction there, May, June, and July. It's expected to contract again in 
August. So manufacturing activity definitely slowing down. Let's uh, check in on shares of Jack Henry and Associates. This is an interesting company, not widely known. They develop integrated data processing platforms that uh, help financial institutions manage uh, many transactions. Uh, Kind of has reversed here, is off its highs, uh, hit an intraday high of 38.07. The stock is still up 2.4% to 36.77. Uh, Not the most powerful of uh, breakouts here, though. Anytime a stock, you know, the volume comes into a stock and it and it takes off on, on decent earnings, you want to see it hold those gains, at least see it close in the upper third of its uh, trading range. That's not the case with uh, Jack Henry. Uh, earnings up 19% to 50 cents a share, uh, sales up 7% to 260 seven million. Other earnings reports uh, today. The news wasn't good at John Deere, ticker DE, on the New York Stock Exchange. Tough day for John Deere, down 6.2% to 75.17. Earnings up 17% from a year ago to $1.98. Sales up 15% to $9.6 billion. Uh, Deere is getting hit with a lot of kind of just bad uh, just a bad demographic uh, what's the word I'm looking for just their their fundamentals are being hurt by a slowing global economy there's a drought going on in the US lower crop yields uh, so it's kind of a perfect storm of negativity for for John Deere in terms of uh, growth prospects uh, going forward uh, the stock getting hit pretty hard today uh, target having a good day TGT on the New York Stock Exchange Target uh, gaps up, up 1.8% to 64.54. Um, they're going to be opening uh, stores in Canada next year, so uh, that is a lot of excitement there for Target. A little bit extended after a recent breakout over 59.40. Here was the last swing point all the way here in, in early June. You see the breakout, so I'd be very wary of uh, chasing Target at this point. looks a little bit extended uh, uh, to me, but uh, decent bottom line and, and top line growth and a decent outlook uh, as well. Some uh, good setups that I'm looking at in the market. Uh, you know, Tepid sales growth in recent quarters at Baxter International, but this is a nice little cup with handle base setting up. Here's the uh, handle area. You see a big move for ba Baxter since mid-June. Runs from 50 up to $59, but a nice little handle area forming here with a, a swing point of 59.96. Basically, call it 60 bucks uh, a share. But um, you know, Baxter looking uh, looking pretty good here. Could be on the verge of um, of a, a breakout. Uh, take a look at shares of uh, Equinix as well. E Q I X. Equinix also holding gains nicely, had a nice earnings report in July. This is a company that uh, operates data centers, so companies lease space from Equinix to house their, their servers. They don't have to you know, pay a lot of money for um, you know, technology infrastructure expansion. Equinix basically leases uh, spaces to these uh, data-centric uh, companies. Uh, Equinix uh, still looking very good here, actually. Um, you know, Again, big gap up on earnings, holding gains nicely, trending nicely above its 50-day moving average. Uh, there's talk that this company could eventually turn into a real estate investment uh, 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 company. They might change their business structure, uh, turn to a, turn into a, a REIT, and that, that could be another catalyst uh, for this stock uh, going forward. But excellent, excellent growth prospects. This is a company that's expected to grow annual earnings by some 40 to 50 percent over the next uh, couple of years. So good growth story at Equinix uh, going on. Seeing a lot of good uh, setups out here. Stocks that have been excellent price performers in the market. Solar wins, uh, you know, again, big earnings in July. Uh, just showing uncanny relative uh, price strength here. Still wary of buying this too. I'd like to see it base. I'd like to see it uh, consolidate uh, for a little while here. Could try to break out uh, anew, but um, you know, normally I like to buy stocks when they're coming out of bases. They're breaking out in heavy volume after uh, having reasonably consolidated gains for uh, a certain amount of time, usually at least two to three weeks. Uh, so solar wind still in the early stages of a consolidation here, but nonetheless showing excellent relative uh, price strength. Uh, REGN, Regeneron, is a name that we've talked about. Uh, we're going to keep checking in on these names on a daily basis. Basis, stocks that are just setting up nicely here for potential upside moves. Remember when a stock breaks out of a base like this, here was a base that started all the way back in April. Uh, Regeneron forming a handle area here. Could try to break out soon over 142 bucks a share. Nice technical setup here. So, you know, my take is that 
you know, even though the bears can make a good case here about, you know, the, the market possibly heading lower, I know, um, uh, my uh, former colleague Doug Cass over at uh, Real Money uh, put a piece out there a day or two ago about the, the triple top uh, forming in the market. I've never really followed the triple top that uh, closely, but he was uh, saying that triple top could um, uh, be an omen uh, or, or presage uh, lower prices ahead for the for the major averages. Um, you know, I'm of the opinion that the kind of the sideways trading here in light volume. Uh, listen, there aren't any sellers in this market. I think there are a lot of people certainly uh, very wary of going short now. Now, you know, a month or two ago, that was a completely different shorts realized they could have their way. It wasn't hard to to go short with uh, with conviction, but. Um, you know, this is um, you know market that still could could work here. So, all right, let's uh, move on here and uh, take a call from uh, Chicago. Uh, Dino has a question on um, what industry group leadership. How are you doing today, Dino? Hey, Ken. I'm doing great. Thanks for taking my phone call. My pleasure, uh, sir. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I got uh, like two questions. I think they're maybe kind of the same uh, about industry. Uh, leadership and institutional ownership. Say, like, when I'm trying to find the leaders or trying to find, like, uh, institutions that are uh, uh, funds buying buying stocks, uh, you know, I always get this feeling, like, say, if I go into the, uh, into the uh, IBD and I see, like, the top ten leaders or I see uh, institutional uh, funds uh, buying stocks that are, like, on the rise, I, I have this feeling that I'm going to be buying at the top, like, today's top 10 might be tomorrow's uh, bottom 20 or something, you know? Yeah, and yeah. Was, yeah, so... I so the the way the way that and that's a common pitfall. Believe me, everybody that's new to IBD, you know, they kind of they kind of uh, they get they get all consumed by you know ninety nine rated stocks or ninety eight rated stocks or stocks that are you know that are under serious accumulation. They're rising in heavy volume, and and really the the trick is you just have to get you know more uh, comfortable being able to look at a chart and say, okay, has this stock run too much already? Where was the last buy? point is it extended five percent ten percent twenty thirty forty percent past uh, the swing point or the uh, the buy point I don't know if you've been listening to the program Joe but you know a, a name like uh, like Baxter International this is not a uh, a classic can slim type stock with big earnings growth and you know sales growth and all that but it's a it's an example of a stock that is not extended and in fact a stock that could be on the verge of a good breakout here so it's really you know you want to you want to pay attention to institutional sponsorship you want to pay attention to the strongest price performers in an industry group the cream of the crop but you want to be wary of buying buying too late and that's a matter of just identifying stocks that are in consolidations that are still within buying range, uh, identifying stocks that are, you know, consolidating gains in healthy manner and are poised for an upward move rather than, you know, chasing the stocks uh, that have already moved, you know, like a Cabela's, you know, CAB. Are you familiar with uh, Cabela's? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Cabela's. I'm going to put a, pull it up here in Tiger Tiger TV. This is a stock, you know, great institutional sponsorship. Certainly a leader in its industry group, but one that is too extended, you know, to to buy right here. Tell you what, uh, Joe. Uh, if you want to hang on, I can uh, sure. finish up the conversation uh, at the other break. Okay, in case you had another sure. question. All right, sure, hang, hang hang tight, hang tight. All right, folks, uh, talking with Dino in Chicago about industry leaders buying growth stocks uh, too late. We'll finish up those thoughts when we come back. You're listening to Breakout Investing on TFNN. We'll be right back. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. 
or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kate Stalter, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Would you like a personal update from Tom O'Brien as to what equities he's trading and what his daily trading plan is before the market opens each morning? Every market day, Tom O'Brien sends out his daily newsletter, Market Insights, to hundreds of subscribers that rely on his daily recommendations when it comes to navigating these highly volatile markets we're dealing with. As recently as May 21st, Market Insights subscribers closed out all five open positions for a combined profit of over 68% in one day. Profits ranged from 6.5% to over 24%, and all of these trades had been initiated within the previous 30 days. Now is the perfect time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's explosive trading newsletter, Market Insights, an $85 value. Tom breaks down the market each morning with his market take and provides trade recommendations, including precise stops and target profit zones, leaving nothing left to guessing. Log on to TFNN.com today and sign up for your two-week free trial. Make sure you're a subscriber the next time Market Insights subscribers close out multiple winning trades. Take action and sign up for your free trial today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator, also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Welcome back. <clears throat> Excuse me. Welcome back, folks, to Breakout Investing. i um, on the phone with um, Dino in uh, Chicago. So, Dino, before we went into break was uh, what I was saying. Did that, uh, did that make sense? Uh, did that make sense? Yeah, yeah. It made, it made a lot of sense. And, uh, and I was going to ask you another thing, too, uh, as far as uh, and you, you look at the sectors first and then you look at the industry groups. Or is it an ETF that you look at for kind of like an overall picture, or are you just kind of looking at like a, like uh, uh, most highs in a group, or? Well, you know, you always want to see breadth of leadership in an industry group. Uh, I basically go through individual stock screens in IBD. So I start with the stocks, and then once I find a stock that looks good, then I'll look inside the group and say, okay, are there a couple of other leaders in the group? And then I'll see where the industry group ranks, uh, you know, out of uh, the whole bunch of groups that IBD ranks. So the way I do it is I actually kind of do individual stocks and then kind of branch out from, from there and make sure that industry group leadership is, uh, is, is pretty strong. But, you know, bottom 
line is just takes a little practice to learn to identify, you know, looking at charts, gauging accumulation, and, uh, and you know, that, that chasing stocks is a common pitfall. Everybody's done it, uh, but once you, once you, you know, go through screens, you'll, you'll learn how to identify, you know, stocks that are coming out of bases. Uh, FLT is another good weekly chart to look at, uh, do you know, FLT, um, you know, another uh, good breakout today, a stock that's not extended, um, you know, good, uh, good leader in its industry group. Great. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks, thanks a lot, Ken. I appreciate okay, your Dino. help. Okay, you, Dino. You betcha. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right. A couple minutes left. We've got time for Roger in Mount Vernon, uh, Washington, wants to talk uh, shares of Google. How are you doing today, Roger? Hey, I'm doing pretty good, Kenny. I wonder if you could oogle Google for me. Oogle. Oogle. Take a oogle at uh, Google? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know what know, everybody seems to be, you know, Look at this thing pretty pretty hard, and uh, I was wondering what you might think a uh, an entry point might be. Well, you know what I'd like to see. I don't want to chase uh, Google up here. I mean, you do. You are looking at a stock that's under a little bit of accumulation here. But I'm going to put up a weekly chart for for Google. Um, I've got some large cap tech exposure in my model portfolio already, and I just feel like I might even be a little too top heavy with uh, large cap tech. I don't own Google. I have been watching it, um, but this is a stock now that's working on five straight weekly price gains, and it's kind of come up hard off the bottom. Volume has been pretty good, Roger. But you know what I'd no. like to see. How happen here is if this market is going to pull back, I don't know if you heard me talking uh, earlier about the hard disk drive makers, but it's kind of a similar move here. Western Digital, STX, Google, they've come up hard off the lows. Would love to see a little bit of a shakeout here. Just a low volume pullback, maybe 2, 3, 4 percent, and then you know that could pave the way for more buyers to come into Google and you get, get a bona fide uh, breakout here. I'd be cautious of chasing it up at this uh, uh, up at these levels, and uh, I'd, I'd much rather see a little low volume pullback pullback. Do you think it's going to uh, build a bit of a base here, or do you think it's going to go lower? Well, again, you're looking at five, you're looking at uh, it, it could be five straight weekly price gains. Okay, so uh, it's been moving up. Um, it's it, it it technically broke out, but you could have what uh, a, a high handle area form here, where you get a little bit of a pullback, and then if it breaks out, you know, then it's just a breakout from a, from a base. So rather than chase it, let's hope we get just a little pullback, maybe two three percent, then wait for volume to come back in. I just don't think it's viable right now. I see. Okay. Yeah. Just checking with you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks again. Have a okay. good weekend. Thank you, Roger. Appreciate it. Okay, bye. Yeah, I mean, listen, these, these base breakouts, when a stock comes up off its low like that, you know, sometimes they keep going. But, you know, it's always good to see a little bit of a shakeout before a breakout. You haven't seen it yet in, uh, in Google. So I prefer just to kind of, you know, sit back here. Uh, see if the market pulls back. And if Google keeps going up, you know, there's a lot of other good setups there. I've been writing about them in my Ultimate Growth Stocks model portfolio, so be sure to check that out. 30 days free on the homepage of TFNN.com. And uh, coming up next, the Tom O'Brien Show, 4 to 6 Eastern. A lot of good information coming up. I'll see you back here tomorrow, 3 o'clock Eastern, for another edition of Breakout Investing. Thanks very much, folks.